What's up everybody, it is Jabro Mac with Animation Hustle and today's video is dedicated to my fellow storyboard artists. As you guys may or may not know, I draw storyboards and I thought it'd be cool to uh, put together a video that shows different storyboard artists in different parts of the industry and we can compare and contrast how their processes are the same and how their processes are different and hopefully share some insight that helps you guys out. This kind of stuff has really been valuable to know when I was getting started, so I wanted to put it together and share it with you guys. In this video, you'll see the process of four different artists who work in four different types of projects within the industry. First up, there's Disney story artists who describe the process working on Disney feature films. We have an Ardman storyboard artist who is talking about his process working on Ardman's stop motion features. And then we have two TV storyboard artists. One works in action comedy, and the other one works in primetime, like family guy type stuff. So it'd be cool to see how they all balance their work and what they have to think about when storyboarding for these different types of projects. I'm hyped for you guys to see this, but before we jump into it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like this video and share it with your friends who also need some storyboard inspiration. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Here is a storyboard artist process as described by four storyboard artists. Hi, my name is John Anderson. I am a storyboard artist on DC Superhero Girls. Bunny sitting, Supergirl needs to save Metropolis from being overrun by bunnies. So what I'm gonna start doing is start thumbnailing and I have a page of uh, 12 boxes. So I get my script and it says, we are in a high angle on the flood of bunnies as it pours through the streets. There's so many different choices as a storyboard artist you have to make. The, they've told me it's a high angle, so we'll probably look down at the street and see a bunch of bunnies. Let's say those are our bunnies. And then I look at that and go, well, that's not that exciting. This is supposed to be an exciting moment. So why don't we try a different angle? What if it's like that? That's kind of an interesting angle. And then I think, well, are the bunnies just going to be moving th through here? What if the camera is moving? To show that a camera's been moving, I usually just put arrows in there. And then I just want the bunnies to show up. So I will tend to do a little bit of color and just say, let's call the bunnies pink. Now Supergirl flies in. Okay, let's draw Supergirl. We're looking at her back here. I probably want to see her face, so maybe we're going to do a cut here and see a shot of her from a different angle. Let's say this is this is her looking down at the bunnies. See her cape flying in the wind. Let's put some motion lines in there so we see, you know, there's things moving behind her. And there she's looking down at the bunnies. Then she's going to say her line, and her line is, time to take out the adorable trash. And so her mouth is open. All right, so we're now into our next step. So what I'm gonna do from there is take my thumbnails and, and make them sequential. This will be the first start of what will be our animation. And all that means is showing one shot at a time. And here we see Kara coming in and she flies down and we start to see things moving. What I'm gonna do is clean up those shots. And I just wanna make sure that they're clear. And what I'll do is just either draw over or in this case, I'm just gonna sort of redraw and sort of clean her up for more on model. She has this great hair that comes in front of her face. She's got this great brow and she's she's talking. So we gotta put her mouth open. I had her arm sort of there. We want her arm kind of close. because She's in this great pose. Her cape is going out. And we wanna give enough an information to the animators so that they kind of have a general idea about the, the feeling, about the emotion, about you know, the action. So it looks a little nicer. And we see her and she says her line. Time to take out the adorable. And here we see a cute little drawing of her face. Trash. It's so exciting to take something that was a word on a page. And, and it's drawn by a series of talented artisans in the storyboard department. Ash Body is going to show us exactly how that process works. We quite heavily work with Nick, so he will sit there and brief us on a sequence and there'll be a page of script and he'll talk through it. And this is a lot for me. And I'm going through going, do these shots work? It's an action sequence. They've scored a goal. Time's ticking down. Everyone celebrates, yeah. Do we need shots of the crowd, scoreboard? And a lot of these I will have eliminated. A lot of self-editing goes right. into this bit. And this is, this is literally, this isn't a printout. This is you just drawing yeah, yeah. on large sheets of paper. Yeah, with a Sharpie and... The next stage, I'm assuming you do some electronic drawing. Yes. Um, sometimes we scan these, but a lot of the time I just pin them up on, on the board for, uh, for reference. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, yeah, so I set my cameras to gray, and then I just, I know I tend to block in with a really fat brush where I want the character to be. 
So oh. I know he's going to be there. So I look to my thumbnail and no, I'm going to have somewhere else. And that's because it's quick. I know how large he's going to be. I'm not getting refined in any particular detail at the moment. And then I know he's looking over here because he's just seen something. And this is pretty much how we do our rough drawings. Wow. And then from this, I'll, I know I want him to look that way now. So he's staying roughly in the same place. So he's looked up and he's going to see something. And the gray gives you a reference point so that yeah. it's a head to So it. it keeps the volume the same size. Mm -hmm. So I know his head's staying roughly in that space. Peeling back behind his head. And then he sees something. So I now have just lowered that one down the opacity a bit. And uh, he's shocked by it, so his eyebrows might go up a bit. Might draw the whites of his eyes in. These aren't necessarily the expressions that the animator will use. Right. They are the and ones that are the clearest to tell the story. And then the animator can use a whole other set, but the, he will look at this and understand the the point of the scene through a few drawings that when he comes to, you know, gets the luxury of movement and 150 frames to make it come to life. Wow. Per day, um, a good speed after we've gone through our thumbnails and and kind of laid everything out, roughed it out. It was about 50 to 70. Per day. Per day is, I, I consider that a, a decent speed to be going. Draw sequence as it turned out. It was just a quick one. When Doug falls into a changing room, and so he, he, he strays in. Oh, ah. wow. Bar of soap. Huh? <laughs> Sees a, a football suit go past him. Huh? huh. Looks up. <laughs> Screen shakes. <laughs> Camera pans over, just a pair of legs sticking out of the shower curtain. Doug's there. <gasps> looks up. And then you've got the character who will grab who goes, huh? And then Doug looks up and goes, uh, hello. <laughs> but that was the first pass of that joke. And then, and hello, everybody. I'm Jason Hand. I've been working at Disney Animation for 13 years. And um, I've wanted to work here my whole life since my dad uh, took me to see a re release of the original Jungle Book when I was a kid. To understand it, that the entire premise here is to enhance the verbal through the visual. You will get the verbal through the script. And then our job is to enhance everything that was written with a visual aspect and what that means um, like I said staging first of all the staging in prime time sitcoms is very much like what is used in live action sitcoms generally speaking characters are all three-quarter front facing camera facing a fourth wall that's never seen which is where the cameras are and much like the characters are lined up on the couch in Big Bang Theory, you will often see the very similar thing in the primetime sitcoms. The reason for this is because we are trying to emulate the live action sitcoms. And this is a live action sitcom set, as you can see, is very shallow due to the limitations of the size of the soundstage and how much room is taken up with a live audience. It is designed so that all the characters will be facing out toward the audience where they are standing or sitting the audience will sit out front and so we want to mimic that in our staging and uh, setups while there are there are two systems for shooting television one is the single camera and one is the three camera system most sitcom in a three camera system as you can see we have a camera a camera and a camera all facing towards the characters as they do their acting. This system was originally developed um, for the show I Love Lucy. It was the first time that three cameras were all shooting simultaneously at a full shot, medium shot, and close up. And then the show would be edited together later. And so as we um, create our shows, we are duplicating this specific setup. Here is uh, the cast of Paradise PD. The first thing to realize is that the horizon line is always going to cut mid-chest to characters. Nearly universally, we will start off with every bit of staging 
by placing our character with a horizon line mid chest. And then all the staging and perspective is gonna flow from the start. Why is this done? Well, television cameras, as you can see here, have a viewing bot for the operator that is at eye level. However, the camera itself shoots at mid chest level. And here's the camera. And the reason for that simply is because when everything started, film or videotape would have to be here passing through the camera and so if the person were also looking through light would get in and destroy the film so there is a system of mirrors that allow the film to be processed at this level while the character i'm sorry the camera operator is looking at this level because this is how all television started We've gotten so used to this being the way that we look at television, we now uh, still operate this way. And in animation, where we can do anything, if we want to emulate primetime sitcoms from the live action, we're going to do setups in the same way. Now, about that horizon line, the way to place characters around a room on a horizon line, there can be multiple vanishing points depending on which way an object is facing, but there's always going to be only one horizon line. This is uh, very important. Whenever a horizon line cuts a character, and it can be mid-chest or we can move it around, say here at the knees, if you place any character, the character anywhere in the setup, as long as that character is always knees, you will have a character in proper perspective. So wherever you set your perspective, wherever you set your horizon line, all characters of the same size are going to cut that horizon line at the same Ralph Breaks the Internet was assigned their story team, and the story team, along with the heads of story, the writers, and the directors help workshop the movie to craft its story. And we do that through discussions about character, theme, uh, dialogue, structure, and entertainment. So we'll get into a room and we'll be talking about what this idea could be. And uh, we usually have this, you know, broken down into a three-act structure, as most films are done. And it sort of, it maps out all the major beats of the film. And um, we do that, and the story starts to take shape through all those discussions. And we have more discussions. And uh, new ideas are tried. And then, uh, maybe we'll do it again. And we'll try it again. Sorry about that. <laughs> Until we all start to agree that the film is uh, ready to go into screenwriting to the script. And uh, that's Pam right there, one of the writers in the middle. And that's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, that's, yeah, Pam in the middle right there. And Ruth to the right hand side is our production manager. And Phil is busy doing, doing some, yeah, doing some <laughs> internet research, it looks like. <laughs> um, so this is just an example of what our, uh, our process looks like as far as uh, the breaking it down into the different acts. And it's on a whiteboard, you see, because we're constantly changing it, erasing it, redoing stuff. Um, on the left-hand side, there is uh, some themes and overall uh, general ideas of what our film was about. It's kind of our umbrella ideas. So the writers do uh, what I'm calling their magic typing stuff because I'm not a writer, um, but what they do is amazing. They take all those ideas we all talked about in a room and they, and they put it all into a script that uh, has all the, the, the great ups and downs of a story. It's amazing what they're able to do. So they produce a finished script right there, and then what we do is we just we ha we have a first screening, which is uh, a storyboarded version of that entire script. And all the while, we know it's going to organically change and grow, but it's a starting point for what we what we start with. And the script is divided amongst the story team. Um, that section right there went to me, and I get to take that back to my desk after the directors have sort of talked through whatever it is they want from the scene. And I'll sit at my desk and I'll read those pages a bunch of times, really understand what's going on. And I'm thinking about stuff like what does the character want? What do they need? Um, maybe some gags I could possibly put in there. Uh, what's the best way to stage this idea so it's clear? And clarity is really important in storyboarding. That's what we're always trying to do. If the ideas aren't getting across, they don't do anybody any good. And uh, entertainment. So it's obviously a lot to deal with at once. So how I usually do it is I do a bunch of thumbnail drawings that I explore ideas really quickly. They're meant just for me. They're really, really simple. Really, I can test ideas, try this, without committing to uh, spending a lot of time on it. It's a really good way to work. So that's me working at my desk, and I'm doing my sequence. And another great thing about our Disney story department is we're all in one area together. So if I am having a question or if somebody else has a, a thought, hey, can you take a look at this? We all sit really close to each other so we can give each other ideas or give some thoughts or feedback. It's really helpful. 
So that's me working on my sequence, and we have this great program that allows us to sort of like or organize our drawings, and you can see between the drawings that you're getting the the action, acting of the uh, characters, and that's how you kind of do storyboarding. You click through the drawings. Um, and a few days later, after I've finished all my work, uh, I pitch. And what this looks like is all the directors, uh, the directors, the writer, the heads of story, and the whole story team is in the room together to see the pitches. And it helps everybody understand what everybody else is doing to know if there's anything that's changing possibly, and just to have an idea of the whole entire thing at once. It's a really great way to keep everybody informed. So our, our, our drawings are projected kind of like this, actually, up onto a big screen in the back of the room. And the lights are turned off. And then we'll just go through and we'll pitch the scene doing the dialogue from the, um, from the script. Sometimes people are really good at doing voices. I'm not that person. But uh, you kind of <laughs> just try to get an idea of what the sense of the pacing of the, of the scene is and see if the jokes are working or if, the, if it's exciting, whatever the kind of scene it is. So this is Vanellope kind of coming over the hill, Ralph Caesar, and I'm going to wreck it, kaboom, or whatever it happens to be. Um, Ralph's like, hey, Vanellope, come on over here. And she er, comes around the corner, and boom, comes to the finish. And the pitch is over, and everybody claps. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. So amazing. <laughs> and I'm feeling really good. I'm like, that was really great. Awesome. <laughs> But unfortunately, usually what happens is immediately people jump in. Oh, what if you did this? This would be really funny. That was great, but what about this? It's, uh, it's, very, um, it's very much a time to sort of beat up the scene, see what could be better, just always trying to make it the best that it could be. So what I'll do is I'll take all those things back to my desk. I'll write all the notes that the directors wanted, what's the things that we decided to add or change, and I'll do it again. Um, I'll do the sequence again. And to be honest, this can happen a few times. Um, depends upon if it's working right or not. But from that point, once we get it working in the storyboard form in, in the room, we'll send it to editorial. And what editorial does is they take our drawings and they time them with a voice track, a scratch recording, um, sound effects, temporary soundtrack, and you get a real good feel of what the sequence is. It, it kind of plays like a movie in drawing form. Okay, so we're getting close to having our first screening. Everything is almost done, and we get to the day where we have our first screening. Um, and we'll all get together in the theater um, right down the way here, and uh, we'll watch the movie in that storyboard form. Um, and you can get a really good idea. Like it, After a couple of minutes, you, you get lost in if the story is working or not. It's a really, really great testing ground. So we're watching it all together, and it ends, and everybody claps. We're all trying to be supportive, like we said before. And we go up into um, a, a room where we have uh, the Story Trust, which is the group of all the directors and the heads of story or writers, anybody who can give us some great uh, insight or feedback on what they just saw in our screening. Um, and very similar to what I was describing in our pitches is we all sort of immediately jump in and start going, oh, that was so great, this part right here. But if you did this, it would make this part even better. It's very. Uh, it's, it's, it's attacking the film. It's not a personal attack on the filmmakers. It's like we're trying to make the best thing possible. So we're trying to uh, get all the ideas out so that when we go and do another pass of this, we're ready to go. Yeah, like I said, we're always trying to find the best idea. And here's a little example of Ralph. And uh, he uh, comes up with a great idea. It looks straight, shiny and bright. He's very happy with it. And unfortunately, we have to hunk, hunk, sh sh throw it away. <laughs> Because if it's not working, throw it out and try something else. We can always put it back in if we need to, but we, uh, we're always trying to make the best thing. So we'll repeat this process over many screenings. Some things will start to stick, and the sequence will go into production and go down into, uh, go into layout and into animation, and other parts won't. And we'll keep working on the parts that aren't in story while the other departments are doing their stuff. So we keep going, keep going, keep testing out ideas, throwing out stuff as needed. Until, keep working on it until we all agree it's the best thing, the best movie we can make. And that, in a very small, uh, simple form, is our story process. <laughs> so I hope you guys found that interesting. I know I definitely did because it's so cool to see how different animators work on different types of projects. It's cool to see how many similarities there are, but it's also cool to explore the differences, like um, what they're thinking about while making a Disney feature seems to be pretty different from what they're thinking about while making an episode of Family Guy. If you're a storyboard artist or want to be a storyboard artist, in the comments below, let me know what type of projects you want to work on. There's also a lot of jobs in animation, so if you want to get into animation but don't necessarily want to be a storyboard artist, let me know what kind of job you're looking to get, and I'll try to find some clips and make a video for you about that specific job. Anyway, I hope you're following us on Instagram. Check back there for constant updates, and I'll see you guys in the next video.